Hi there my gods, it's Weiss and for today's video, I'll be tier ranking Rick Riordan's books. And when I'm talking about Rick Riordan's books, I'm not including books from Rick Riordan Presents, but from the Riordanverse series, which are books that take place in the same universe. PJO, Heroes of Olympus, Trials of Apollo, Magnus Chase, and The King Chronicles. Before getting into it, here are the groups that I'm going to be placing these books in. The first one is Deserves to be in Olympus meaning books that I really love. The next one is Blue Food Amazing, which is a direct reference to Sally Jackson's Blue Food from PJO, and this means books that I love, but not loving enough to place it in the highest tier. Third is Generally Like, meaning books that I do like or in the middle with. Fourth is Could Be Better, which I think is self-explanatory because it just means books that are good, but I think that Rick could have done a better job with it. And last is the no thanks tier, which means books that I don't really like. I can't really say hate because I don't think I've ever hated a Rick Riordan book. So last thing before getting into it, major spoiler warning. And with that, let's get started. So starting off with the first book right here is The Lost Hero, aka the first book in the Heroes of Olympus series. I've voiced out my opinion when it comes to this book and have stated that it isn't my most favorite book out of the Riordan verse because coming from PJO, I was expecting more of the old characters to come, but instead, we were given new characters like Jason, Piper, and Leo. Despite this though, I still enjoyed the book, and because of Rick's writing style, I was actually able to connect more with the characters. And because of all that, I'm placing it in generally like because I do like this book, and I just think it deserves to be there. Next is The Son of Neptune, aka the second book in the Heroes of Olympus series. Okay, so this one goes to Blue Food Amazing. I love this book. The introduction of Camp Jupiter was amazingly written, and I have to say, compared to Jason, Piper, and Leo, or the new characters we were introduced to in The Lost Hero, I just connected more with the new characters we got from this book aka Frank, Hazel, and Reyna. I definitely love this one over The Lost Hero because of its amazing moments, and I just feel like it was more compelling than The Lost Hero. So next is The Mark of Athena, aka the third book in the Heroes of Olympus series, an automatic place to deserves to be in Olympus. I love The Mark of Athena so much, from the added Annabeth perspectives to the Persebeth reunion, and the entire quest Annabeth had to go through to face her fears to get the Athena part in us, that was just amazing. I don't have any other words to describe it. This book is a masterpiece to me. Next is The House of Hades, the fourth book in the Heroes of Olympus series. This book has amazing moments as well. From the introduction of Bob, Percy and Annabeth's quest in Tartarus, the other adventures the rest of the seven was going through in the Argo 2, to the battle that raged in the Necromantion, this book is by far one of the best, and for that, I'm placing it in Deserves to be on Olympus. I don't think I need to explain further as this is actually the fandom's most favorite book, so if you've read this book, you just know how epic this was. Next is The Blood of Olympus, the fifth and final book in the Heroes of Olympus series. Again, this is going to Deserves to be on Olympus. I know, it's controversial, but in my opinion, this was by far the best book out of the entire Heroes of Olympus series. I love this book so much. From Reyna and Nico's moments, to that Persebeth kiss, to the entire final battle with the gods side by side with their kids, I absolutely love this book, and it deserves to be there for me. Next is The Sword of Summer, also known as the first book in the Magnus Chase trilogy. I'm placing this in generally like. This book is actually my least favorite in this trilogy, and I think the reason why is the pacing. There were a lot of slow moments, and it took me quite a while before heading to the final action. But still, I love this book. It's a great introduction to the characters, and that's just that. Next is The Hammer of Thor, the second book in Magnus Chase. I like this book way better than The Sword of Summer, and I would say that it was such a huge upgrade. With the addition of Alex Fierro and the entire adventure they had to go through in this book, it made me love it so much. So for that, I'm placing it in Blue Food Amazing. It's a great book and definitely a worth its sequel. The next is The Ship of the Dead, the third and last book in Magnus Chase. I'm placing it in Could Have Been Better. 
don't get me wrong, I don't think this is a bad book, but I just wish that Rick could have done something that would make the outcome of this book better. Not that many people have voiced this out, but I just feel like this book was dedicated to the characters. We got to know the past of each character, like TJ, Mallory Keane, Halfborn Gunderson, and Alex Fierro. I know it seems interesting to know each character's past, but I just feel like Rick added those flashbacks in a bit of a hasty way since he wasn't able to do that in the past two books. I like the fact that we got a bit of background on each character, but it just feels a bit forced. Also, the outcome of Loki's fight with Magnus was a bit sad to me, because I was expecting a bit more than Magnus having the power of friendship by his side. I don't know, that's just what I feel about this book. I like it, and I was pretty happy with the ending that Magnus and Alex got, but I just feel like it could have been executed better. Next is The Lightning Thief, the book that started it all and the first book in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. I love this book. Seriously, I do. But I don't know if it's because it's been so long since I've read this book that makes me want to place it in generally like. I might have placed it higher if I would reread the series, but right now, I'll place it there. It's a great book and an introduction, and the cliffhanger by the end was written pretty well, and that's just that. Next is The Sea of Monsters, the next book to The Lightning Thief. I'm placing this one in Could've Been Better. Again, it's not a bad book. I definitely prefer The Lightning Thief over this one, but it was still a great book. Here we got Tyson's introduction, the entire Cersei's Island plotline, Percy turning into a guinea pig, and Annabeth saving him, which, side note, is one of the most iconic Percy moments, and then Grover wearing a wedding dress, Clarice's plotline with her father's pressure on her, and overall, it had a pretty solid plot and amazing characters. However, the most prominent thing that I remember when it comes to this book is the slow pacing, and I think Rick could have done a better job with it. Next is The Titan's Curse, the third book of PJO. Again, it's another amazing book. I'm placing this in Blue Food Amazing. I love this book. We got Nico and Bianca's introduction, Percy holding the way of the sky for both Artemis and Annabeth, the damn joke from the Hoover Dam, and the entire intro of the Hunters of Artemis, and don't get me started on the cliffhanger that Nico was the son of Hades. That really shook me the first time I read about it. So overall, this book is going to Blue Food Amazing. And next is The Battle of the Labyrinth. This goes to Deserves to be on Olympus, because this book is amazing. I was so pumped up whenever reading it, because of the first Percibeth kiss, the battle that occurred in Camp Hapblood, Luke being the human host that Cronus was going to use in the final adventure. I'm sorry, but this book was spectacular to me. And next is The Last Olympian. Another place to deserves to be on Olympus, because this book really takes the cake. The epic conclusion, the battle of Manhattan, Percibeth getting together, the entire fight against Kronos, and overall, this book was outstanding. Like, I can't praise it enough. Next is The Red Pyramid, the first book in the Cain Chronicles. I'm placing this in Generally Like. I think that this was a great book and a great introduction to Carter and Sadie, but like The Titan's Curse, it took me a bit to fully get into this book. There were a few slow moments here and there, but I still loved it. Next is The Throne of Fire, the book after The Red Pyramid. I'm placing this in Blue Food Amazing. I would say that this book was a huge upgrade compared to The Red Pyramid, and I just enjoyed this book more. Ada would finally getting to know the real Zia after meeting her Shabdi version in the previous book, the addition of Walt Stone and Bess, the dwarf god, it all made this book a great read. And again, this book is amazing. Next is The Serpent's Shadow, the third and final book in the King Chronicles trilogy. I'm placing this in Deserves to be an Olympus. I don't know about you guys, but this book is by far the best in the trilogy. It was also the most compelling, and I would say that it's sadly underrated in the fandom. Actually, the King Chronicles as a whole is criminally underrated, and I just wish people would try out these books. And next is The Hidden Oracle, the first book in the Trials of Apollo series. I'm placing this in Deserves to be an Olympus, because I love this book so much that if I didn't need to do anything else, I might have read this book in one sitting. 
Unfortunately, I didn't do that, but if I had the audacity, I probably did. This book was by far one of the best introductions in the Briarden verse, and I'm actually pretty sad that not many people praise this book unlike I do. Like, there are times when people say that this book was slow for them, and I'm just like, wait, did we read the same book or a different edition or something? There was no slow moment for me here. I loved every second of it, and I guess that's just what I feel. Next is The Dark Prophecy, the second book and the next book to the Hidden Oracle. I've stated in a video that this is my least favorite book in the Trials of Apollo series, and because of that, I'm placing it in generally like. With all honesty, I love this book, but I sort of struggled with it because of the pacing. It really took a toll at me, and I spent a lot of time reading this book, but I refused to DNF it, because I wanted Greg to pull me into his story, and he really did in the end. I still love this book. And next is The Burning Maze, the third book in The Trials of Apollo. A book that emotionally damaged me. Not as much as The Tower of Nero, but this book still wrecked me. I'm not going to talk about Jason again, because if you know, you know, but this book is quite a wrecking ball. Now, I'm placing it in Blue Food Amazing. I know, I'm doing that despite Jason's fate. Yeah, I am. I love this book as a whole, and even if I do feel sad about Jason's death, I think that it really affected Apollo and developed him as a person, and I think that's the reason why I love this book. Next is The Tyrant's Tomb, the next book after The Burning Maze. I'm going against the popular opinion here by placing it in Deserves to be an Olympus. I'm sorry, but this book blew my mind and I loved it so much. It's an incredible book and it had me to the edge of my seat because of how intense some things were and I just loved it. And last but not the least, The Tower of Nero. I mean, is this even a question? This obviously goes to the highest tier, aka deserves to be an Olympus, because this book is a masterpiece to me. I know that I've stated that time and time again, but I can't say it enough. This conclusion was better than I expected, and it made me feel really bittersweet at the end. I love this book, and it's hands down one of the best in the Riordan verse. So how about you? How would you tier rank these books? Let me know in the comments down below.